Boomer, we've seen the uh, beep test. This morning we saw the yo-yo test and you excelled. It was uh, very impressive. Take us through it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a different type of test. It doesn't go for very long, but once you get to a certain point, it just the lactic acid builds up in the legs and uh, I think Sam Gibson took it out again. He's a, uh, a freakish runner, so I think he got the vickies again today. But over the 2Ks, it looks like he's a little bit quicker than group, but over the endurance today, you uh, really excelled as well. Oh, I think that's my type of running. When, as soon as there's a little bit of recovery in it, it's a little bit more footy running, so that probably suits me a little bit more. But yeah, Gibbo in the 2K, he blows everybody out. I'm not, not sure if there's uh, too many people in the competition that would keep up with Gibbo. Brent, it's your 20th pre-season. Can, can you sort of get your head around that? Do they become easier to manage or do they just get harder in your own head? Uh, I I wish I could say they'd become easier, but they certainly don't. Last year we had seven weeks before Christmas, uh, three weeks in Utah and four weeks in Melbourne, and that was really, really hard. This year, uh, obviously, we made the prelim last year, so your pre-season shortened. We've only had three weeks. We finished tomorrow, so time-wise it's been easier, but the, the physical input that we put in with our weights and our running and our skills, uh, not too much changes, even though it is uh, my 20th pre-season. Just for the viewers at home, just can you just, just talk through what you went through out there for that three and a half hours? Yeah, so 11 o'clock we came out, we did a, a yo-yo test, which uh, is very similar to a beep test, into probably two and a bit hours of skills, I think it was, and then um, 16 300s. So they actually cut a couple off at the end too because we got our time, so that was nice of them <laughs> after 14. So um, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty exhausting session to tell you the truth. I think it was three and a half hours on the track, which is... The norm this time of year, but uh, on the other side of Christmas, things start getting a little bit more real, and um, you know you can play for play for game type of uh, training. Do you still enjoy it coming out here, slogging your guts out year after year? Uh, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. Uh, I've done it for long enough now to say it, you know enough would be enough. But that's the exact reason why I do it because I still loving I still love coming to training uh, with 45 guys, and um, you know we're all trying to win a premiership. So to share that um, feeling while we're training and try to get the best out of each other, it's a, it's a good job. Surprise yourself over pre seasons, you know, from one to the next that you get fitter, or do you find that you reach a point where you, you know, you can't get any fitter than you have been in the past? I think after about six or seven pre seasons, you probably maintain it more than anything and you, you keep that fitness level. You know, there's not too much peaking. I think when you're younger, you can certainly come out and dominate a pre season or have a bad one, but I think once you get over 25 and you've done a few of them, you certainly just, um, it's, it's really, you know, averaged out and you just get through them. For some, of, for some of these pre-season trainings though, do you wake up in the morning and you think, God, I've got three and a half hours of a hard slog, I'm not sure I can do this anymore? No, it's probably the reason why I've been playing for, for 19 years, because I don't think like that. I wake up out of, get up uh, in the morning very early and, uh, and get ready for training. And like I said, it's, I enjoy coming to training. You know, we've got 18-year-olds here, I've been playing for 20 years, and I love coming in and challenging them, just like they're going to try to challenge me in the running or the skills. So um, as long as we compete against each other that will make us better and like I said the, the whole reason that there's 45 blokes here is to win a premiership and uh, that's what we're aiming to do. And what's a typical day for Boomer over the break? Do you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and go, go for a 10k run again? What, what sort of things do you do to mix it up? No, nah, it won't be 5 o'clock in the morning, it'll be a little bit of a sleep in so uh, I, like, I do like getting up, uh, getting up a little bit early and doing my training before the kids wake up so then I've got the whole day with the kids. We just head up the river, a little bit of our water skiing and just relaxing. Nice part of the world, bit of sun, and um, enjoy uh, enjoy a bit of family time. Speaking of winning mm. premiership, uh, where do you see this group at the moment? Can you see similarities with, say, the '99 list, or sort of yeah, coming into that sort of stage? It's really hard because it was so long ago. To tell you the truth, we had such a different group. Um, we had a really older group there and a wise group. This year, we've, we've got a mixture of some young guys. We've added Sean Higgins and uh, Jared Waite, who look absolutely fantastic on the on the track. Um, so it's really hard to compare the two groups, but I mean, we made a prelim next year, so we've got to improve. And if that's to make a grand final or to win a grand final, that's certainly what we'll be trying to do, is improve. Um, everybody else will put their own expectations on us, but we know where we want to go to. Do you feel like yep. this is the closest you've been since 99? Yeah, yeah, I think last year, after we won a couple of finals, you start realising how potent our group is and how good we can be. Um, but this pre-season there's a real sense of belief there and you know we've made it nearly to the top now but again saying that we realised how far away we were. Sydney pulled our pants down, they absolutely smashed us and then Hawthorne beat them pretty convincingly in the grand final so we thought we went okay until uh, the pointy end of the season and we'll all we'll a fair way off so we have got a lot of improving to do if we want to get back up there next year. Sorry, just one final one. The AFL introduced an initiative where kids are going to be able to go to Sunday matches for free at Eddie Howard and the MCG. You've got kids. Yep. Just how, how great is this initiative by the Actually, AFL? Actually, I heard that on the radio on the way in the train today and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I think for the local punter that, you know, it ends up costing them a couple of hundred dollars to go to football, 
and I know the numbers are still up and stuff like that, but it's about family. It's about putting on some good entertainment for the young kids. And you've seen how many young kids are at training today, getting their jumper signed. That's what it's all about. So when I heard it on the radio this morning, I thought that was a really great initiative by the AFL. Yeah, that's beautiful. Awesome.